right? We have lots of techniques which um, don't make the students feel guilty or inferior or just, these are just factual techniques, right? Uh, and and uh, so the student needs a fact. Well, we, we, can, we have ways of giving the fact. And these ways, one of them is finger correction, for example. So we put words on, uh, on fingers. And if they, for example, if a student is, is saying, uh, I'm going to London, and he says, I'm going London, all right, so I put up fingers, I'm going, and there he's faced, and I say London, so there he has problem, what's on here? Mm -hmm. And it, it suddenly becomes a puzzlement rather than a, a mistake, right? And uh, so that's an extremely efficient way of making stu a student aware of mistakes and uh, without there being any sense of um, recrimination you or, yeah, guilt or, or you yeah. shouldn't have. Or, and I don't say anything at all. All I do is make him aware of the fact that this word was missing. Or he's saying, I'm going to at London. All right. So say it on my fingers. So he says, he touches my fingers from this side. I'm going to and there's no finger for at and London. Mm. And, or he might say, I'm going at, and here's London, and there's no space here for the two. All right, so he has to rearrange his sentence. And that means he has to think about it. Which, which is it, to or at? I'm going, and so he thinks about it, and he comes up with an answer. And if his answer is wrong, all I have to do is lift my eyes to the class, and they will be able to help. And uh, so this is a technique which is, um, extremely easy to use, extremely efficient, and produces no sense of uh, failure yeah. in the student. It's simply something that that student at this instant doesn't know. And that's and, permissible, And that teaches uh, self-assessment as well. Yes, yes. Your criteria for self-correction so that you can become increasingly autonomous or maybe even independent, uh, yes. but not too soon, I think. Yes. Well, yeah. and you can be independent, you can be completely independent for certain things in language and, and completely dependent for those that you haven't yet learned. And uh, this too is, is clear. You can, th this is not something either you're this or you're that. You can be uh, completely independent for certain things that you know you know, and then uh, there's all the part in the middle that is that you're still learning, and then there's the part that you just haven't even thought of at all yet. That it's not even in your mind that this will be possible mm. because you're dealing with this part here in the middle that you're that you're dealing with, right? And the the thing about it too is that in this way of teaching, at least in languages, the mistakes. What is where is the barrier between what you know and what you don't know? That is revealed every time a student says a sentence, because what they say correctly, they know, and what they don't say correctly, they don't know. And so the frontier between what they know and what they don't know is immediately obvious. Mm -hmm. it's, it's where they make mistakes. And so this is where I correct. And, uh, and the rest, they know. I don't have to teach them that because they have it. Mm -hmm. So this, this makes teaching languages extremely, uh, and you could probably say similar things about teaching mathematics, peers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and teaching reading, it's the same kind of thing. It, 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 uh, the way of teaching reveals the situation, the immediate situation here and now of the student, mm. which it might be they know this very well, or it might be they, it's, it's coming, but it's not there yet, right? It's still in stage two, now it's gone to stage three and it's correct, so I let it go and uh, et cetera, et cetera.